Hello everybody and welcome to Organian's Puzzle Box. In today's tutorial we're going to explore adding cell bombing and also distance blend tiling for your landscape. In a previous tutorial we actually explored how to create nanite displacement on our landscape and then in the follow-up tutorial we learned how to add fake ambient occlusion to add more depth to our textures and landscape. Well, today it's all about tiling. Today we're going to learn how to do a distance blend between a near uh, point of view and a far point of view. And also we're going to add cell bombing, which is going to allow us to have almost no repetition on our textures that can be visible. As you can see in the example on the screen, on the right side we have a lot of tiling, while on the left side there's virtually no tiling visible whatsoever. The first thing we want to do in the material that is provided in the template is to duplicate layer 1 and layer 2. We want to create a new um, copy of layer one because this is going to serve for our distance blend. One of them is going to be the far one, so layer 01 underscore far. And then we want to change the tiling to it of layer 01 underscore tiling to tile underscore far. And then we want to change the other layer set, uh, which is going to have near at the end so that we know that these are far and near. We're also going to change the name of the name reroute that we created in the previous tutorial so that they can actually emphasize the fact that one of them is far and one of them is near. Once we do that, we can actually create the distance blend by bringing the blend material attributes node. We're also going to bring our two name reroutes, layer 01 uh, near and far, and we're going to connect them like so in the A and B slots of the blend material attributes. Then we want to add a new node for our alpha. So we're going to use a distance blend node and we're going to plug that over into the alpha. Once this is done, we can create two parameters for the blend range and start offset. And I'm going to make sure that they have layer 01 in the title as well. And the value for the blend range is going to be 15,000, while the value for the start offset is going to be minus 3,000. And I will explain these figures later on in the video. Once this is done, we're also going to create a layer 01 auto material named reroute. Then we can actually go over to the end of our material, delete layer 01, and then add our new auto material uh, name reround that we created and plug that into the B material, and then we can press apply. When we have a look on our landscape, you'll notice now that we have a blend between up close and further away. So if we get close to the terrain, the blend will change to the near texture, and if we go further away, then it will change to the far texture. If we bring in our material um, instance, we can actually edit our tiling for near and far independently. And you can play around with these numbers based on what sort of settings you'd like to see. Obviously, you have to be at the right range in order to see the changes. Now, changing the tiling over, I would recommend a tiling near of 10 and a tiling far of 1 for this particular example. We can also enable the tiling blend range, and if we change that from 15,000 to 100, you'll notice that the tilings happens at a far shorter distance between the two uh, distances. Basically, they're not blending enough. But I would recommend keeping that to 15,000 and then the offset to minus 3,000 for this. Then we want to do the same thing for layer 2. So I'm going to really speed this up now because it's going to literally be the same thing that we've done before, but now we're doing it for layer 2. So once you do that, also make sure that you create an auto material for this using the same blend um, method that we used before. And again, this is literally a repeat of what we've done, but instead of using layer 1 as a name, we're changing that to layer 2. Once we've done this and we have a layer 2 auto material, we can put this into the blend material attributes so that we can actually blend between the two new um, layers um, and, and their distance blends. Once you do this, press apply and have a look again at the landscape and play around with the material instance again. And changing our tiling, you can see that now the sloped rock is changing as well. And this is giving us a far better way of defining the detail of our texture from up close or at a distance, thus creating a far more natural look. Now it's time to create our cell bombing material function. So I'm just going to make a, a bit of space here because this is where going to, we're going to put the cell bombing. Now we're going to use our Voronoi texture that is provided, the 4K, 4K one, and we're also going to create a new material function which we're going to call MF cell bombing. Now we're going to open this and in here we can start our new setup. The first thing we want to do is we want to bring that Voronoi texture inside the cell bomb. And from this, we're going to use this as a base mask. 
So first things first, let's add a sort of a comment section in here so we can actually group this up. And we're going to search for a texture coordinate and then connect that to a function input, which will change the vector to, which is going to be our UV. Then we're going to add an append vector node and connect our UV and a value of zero to it. We're also going to add a multiply node and a mask um, uh, for our material. And we're also going to add another function input and call this cell scale. We're going to be able to um, change the cell scale to scalar and connect that to the multiply node, which connects into the mask, which then goes into the UV of our Voronoi texture. Once this is done, we can start the next phase of the material. Let's first add an empty color slot with RGB set to zero, which will then connect to the pivot point of a rotate about world axis node. After this is done, we're going to add an, uh, an add node, a multiply node, and then we're going to connect the multiply. Uh, actually, sorry, we're going to add a new component mask, which is masking the RNG channel, and we're going to connect our multiply node to it. Then we're going to add a new add node, and the Z axis of the wor rotate about world axis will connect to one of the add nodes, and then we'll connect these add nodes together like so. We'll then also search for a function input, and this will be uh, a, a scalar as before, and then we're going to call this pattern scale. This is going to allow us to control the scale of our pattern of the Voronoi. We're going to connect this to the multiply node and then take the append node and connect this to that very same multiply node that we did before. Once you do this, the multiply node will also connect to the first add node. And then we're also going to add a static switch parameter and we're going to connect our second add node to the true value to execute it uh, if the condition is false, uh, true. We're also going to add a new function input, and this we're going to change to a static Boolean. And we're actually going to call this uh, rotation variation, and then we're going to put that into the value. And now we want to add a static Boolean to it as a default state of false. We're going to take the uh, second, sorry, the first add node and connect it to the false because if we want to skip using the rotate about world axis. We're also going to add a new mask and connect our switch to that. And that's kind of it for this particular part. Then we're going to add a new multiply node, connect that to the add node in our, in our um, uh, system. And then we're going to add a new function input and call it random offset variation and connect that to the multiply. We can actually categorize this as a random offset. After we've done this, we can drop the texture, the, the uh, Voronoi texture a few times and connect, convert one of them to a texture object. We'll connect this to a texture 2D function input and connect that to the texture of our texture samples and the two masks we created before to our texture samples themselves. And this is going to be our texture bombing category. Once this is done, we're going to add a new multiply node and a new function input, which we're going to call a random rotation variation. And this is going to be a scalar connected to the multiply node. And the red channel of our um, main Voronoi texture will connect to that multiply node as well. The next thing, we're going to add a new multiply node and we will set its B value to minus one. This will now connect to a rotate about world axis node. And we will also add a color a node set to RGB uh, set to zero uh, for the pivot point. Once we do that, we're going to bring the RGB of our texture sample and connect that into the world position of our rotate about world axis node. And we're also going to connect the multiply node from the random rotation we created earlier into the multiply node that we did previously. Then we're going to also add a static Boolean and we're going to create a function input called a normal map with a question mark at the end. We're going to add a static switch parameter in place and we're going to connect our boolean to the value of it. And then we will uh, take the z axis and connect it to an add node that then uh, will have it connected, connected uh, over to the RGB texture that we used previously. And this will connect to the true of the static switch node. And the RGB texture directly will connect to the false node as well. So, we, so in case we need to bypass it if it's not a normal map. Then from the static switch parameter, we can actually add a new static switch and connect this, the previous one, to the true value of that one. And our RGB texture will connect to the false value as well. Now to actually dictate this value, we're going to use our rotation variation static boolean as a uh, point of deciding whether it's true or false. We're also going to add a lerp node in here. And with this lerp node, we can now connect our uh, system in 
uh, to feed up into the final output. So we'll take the RGB of our uh, one of our textures and connect it into the A input, and then the static switch that we previously created into the B input. The LERP will connect into the, our output result, and now we have to dictate the alpha, which will be basically the alpha of our initial Voronoi texture that we added into the material shader, and that should be our cell bombing done uh, almost, let's say. One of the things we want to also want to do is go to the rotation variation, uh, sorry, the random offset variation, and make sure we change that from a function input vector free to an input scalar, otherwise we will have issues. As that's done, also connect the, this add node to the world position of the rotate about world axis, drag and drop the cell bomb into the material shader, and now you'll notice that we have quite a lot of parameters to fill in. Let's make some space in our material shader and drop our cell bombing, because we will need to uh, duplicate this three times for each of the textures that we're using, for base color, normal map, and also for our um, uh, ambient occlusion, roughness, and displacement texture. You'll notice that the texture cannot simply connect to the cell bomb texture because it's a float free, which is not compatible with texture 2D. So we need to select our texture sample and change it to a texture object. And you have to do this for every texture in order for this to work. Once everything has been changed, you can actually plug the texture objects over into the cell bomb texture. And you'll notice for our other texture, for the one that contains the ambient occlusion, roughness, and displacement, that it actually only has one input into the cell bomb. So we're going to have to get a bit creative here. We can actually take the output of the cell bomb and split it in order to get all of our maps on the other end. So from the cell bomb, drag out a node and then type in split components. And this will give us the RGB of the cell bomb the red channel will connect into the ambient occlusion of our material, the green channel will connect to the roughness of our material, and the blue channel will connect to the displacement texture of our material, the displacement slot. Once that's done, we also need to ensure that all the maps are properly connected uh, on the whole material. So when you look at things like the normal map, the base color, everything else, you gotta look at these connections and make sure that they're properly aligned. Like, for example, make sure that your red channel is plugged into all the ambient occlusion slots and that your normal is not, is, if the cell bombing result of the normal is plugged into the normal map and so on. We're also going to make sure that the UVs are connected to the cell bomb itself because our texture objects no longer have a new V slot for us to be able to use it. Now we need to create a material parameter for each of the cell bombs themselves, and you can promote each of them to a parameter, like for example the normal map, the rotation variation, random offset variation, the pattern scale, random rotation variation, and cell scale. You can basically do all of these by promoting them to parameters or creating new parameters manually yourself and naming them in however way you see fit. Once all of these have been created, select all of them and change them to group a group called cell bomb in order for us to find them in the material instance, instance quite easily, and also change their sort priority to one so that they appear at the top. What we also want to do is we want to add layer 01 at the start of each of the parameters because this is for layer 1 and then we're obviously going to have a variation of these parameters for layer 2 as well so that we can control them independently of each other. Now you want to connect all of these to all of your cell bombs, otherwise, obviously, we can't control the other ones and our material will still be in an error. So now I'm going to quickly connect everything together so that we can move along to the next phase of the tutorial, which will be all about um, sorting out the next bits in order to get the cell bomb to work. Make sure that the normal map is turned on and only active on the normal map cell bombing and not the other ones because this has to be set to true in order for us to tell the system that the cell bomb is a normal map. Once this is done, you're also going to notice that there's still, um, you know, materials, to the parameters to be added over to our other cell bombs. And also make sure that the UV is also connected into the material function displacement control. Now, I'm not going to actually start this from scratch on layer 01 near. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete everything in that um, area, and I'm going to copy the other layer that we've done and paste it over um, for the near uh, part of our um, of our material uh, for layer 01, which basically means just duplicating what we've done and then just changing a few things here and there in order to make our um, you know life a lot easier. 
once you've done this, press, press apply. And then you can have a look at the landscape itself to see the cell bomb in action. To start off with, it will look quite blurry because all of our values are set to zero. So we need to bring in the material instance and start changing that in order to see the proper texture at work. When you bring in the material instance, you'll be able to see that we've got cell bombing as a category at the top and we have all of our settings over for layer one. So I'm going to enable all of these uh, parameters and now I can start adjusting the figures. I will start by setting everything to number one. And as we play around with the settings, you'll notice that we still are seeing a repetitive tiling texture, even though the cell bomb is active. So clearly there is something that's not properly working here. Now, another issue that we've got is that when we enable layer one rotation variation, our entire landscape material gets disabled. And this is because we have a problem within the material shader itself that needs rectifying. So we need to effectively find what that problem is. Now, enabling all these options and changing around, nothing really happens with the, with the material. Clearly, there's still a problem. But if we disable the rotation variation, then it works just fine. Again, our tiling is still a bit messed up and we can still see the patterns. And also by changing these settings and making the cells very small, we start seeing a little bit of the improvement, but still something, as I said, is wrong. So we, go, we can go back into our material and find out what's going on in the material function. The first thing we want to do is we want to open the texture, the Voronoi texture, and disable sRGB on it in case that is enabled. Then you'll get an error because you need to change over from the color uh, sample type to a linear color. And then we also have, obviously, the other texture samples that we've added as a Voronoi texture, which we will need to um, actually change them to empty texture samples. So that adds two empty texture samples into the world and delete the ones that you had previously. Once this is done and the connections are redone again, make sure that we're actually using the default texture for our texture object in the texture bombing category in order to fix this problem that we previously had. Once this is done, we will notice that our rotation variation is still causing us issues even though when we enable it. So I think it's something to do with the normal map uh, boolean. So if we go back into our main material shader, we can delete that boolean and instead add a normal static boolean and connect that to the normal map. Then add another static boolean, which is set to false, and connect it to the other normal maps uh, slots in our cell bombing for the other two textures that are actually not normal map. Then repeat this process for every one of the cell bombs in the material shader. And this, in theory, will rectify the problem that we have. Once we've done all of that and we enable the rotation variation again, you'll notice that it's now actually working just fine after it loads and our entire cell bombing technique is actually working quite well. When you use the random rotation variation, you'll notice that it just changes the texture quite a lot, effectively blending a lot of the a lot of these a lot of the layer together so that it creates this um, untileable a sort of texture which looks quite good from afar and up close with no visible tiling whatsoever. Now the next thing we want to do is we obviously want to duplicate all of this to layer 2. So this is very speed up, sped up because I'm effectively copying layer 1 and creating layer 2 out of it. But, but then I just rename everything to layer 2 in order to uh, obviously create a difference between them. So once this is done and all of our textures are set up properly, we can then go on and... Uh, you know, make sure that the naming is correctly done, the naming convention for everything relating, relating to layer 2. Once we apply this, our cell bombing will be active on the mountain slopes as well. So when we enable the material instance parameters, we can play around with these settings in the same way that we did for the other layer. And now we have no visible tiling, like I've said, anywhere. And this is exactly what we needed to do in order to get a proper effect. Now our landscape looks very good from up close and at a distance. And if we play the level, we'll virtually see no tileable uh, issues whatsoever, which is, like I've said, exactly what we wanted. Playing around with the character and moving through the world, you'll notice the nanite displacement from the previous tutorial. You're also going to notice the ambient occlusion that we're using for the blend, but more importantly, the cell bombing and the distance blend that we've just created. So effectively now you are armed with a lot more knowledge in dealing with materials overall. But thank you guys for watching the tutorial. I hope you really liked it and I hope you learned something. If you did, please leave a like, comment and subscribe and let me know what you'd like to see next. If you have any questions, please join my Discord server where I will make sure that I answer everything that I can. 
Thank you for watching and keep creating.